Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today to a review of what is undoubtedly the best value micro brand GMT I have ever seen. We all know GMTs are very much the flavour of the month at the moment thanks to Seiko releasing the NH34 forehand movement last year. Now I have looked at quite a few micro brands already containing that movement with prices ranging from 550 down to today's watch, the Admiral by Revelo at 249 US dollars. So for well under 300 bucks, you get a full sized, full spec and very well manufactured dive GMT. Now this is the first watch of theirs that I've looked at on the channel, but it should be the second. I've been chatting to brand owner Kevin about a review for ages. I was too busy to review the Hex Mariner 41, but Mr. P bought one and I was really, really impressed with it. So I agreed with Kevin to review the Hex Mariner 39. Unfortunately, the prototypes got lost in transit the first and the only time that has ever happened. They never turned up, gone forever, I'm afraid. So we were both quite relieved when these admirals duly arrived in Sydney a couple of weeks ago. You saw the pop up? This video is sponsored by Revelo. The Admiral GMT goes on early bird special in 10 days time on May the 3rd, so you've got plenty of time to get yourself organized. I will of course therefore leave a link in the description of the video to their website. Now this one made a cameo in Loom Wars 12 last week, so you might have already had a look at it. Believe me, there's a lot to look at. Let's flip the camera and do just that. Let's have a look at some pretty pictures while I talk about my favorite subject, money. These are awesome value, yes, but there are a couple of caveats. The headline price of 249 is for the watch on a rubber strap. If you want a bracelet, you're looking at 295 and those are limited early bird prices to boot. But you're still looking at under 300 on rubber and under 350 on the bracelet version thereafter, which still makes it the cheapest microbrand GMT that I've looked at to this point, powered by an NH34. There are a bunch of different color variants. As you can see, I told you there was a lot to look at. These watches are full on. As such, the color variants are also full on. Please note the loom you get varies depending on the color version as well. They're not all the same. Now you might have spotted a couple of these press shots feature a US military vessel in the background. That's the LCS, meaning literal combat ship, a relatively small, light and agile trimaran designed for tactical naval exercises, I assume. This vessel was apparently the inspiration for the Admiral and you can see the shape of the LCS at various points around the watch, particularly the handset. Of course, I'll show you that in more detail shortly. But first, packaging. It's one of these draw sleeve cardboard boxes like you get with a Citizen. You also get a two year warranty though, which I always appreciate, especially at this price. Now I've been sent prototypes in two different colors with both bracelet and color match silicone rubber strap. The bracelet is, engineer-ish. I've never seen one of these before. It's chunky like an engineer, but not as articulated as one, hence the ish. In fact, I've never seen a watch quite like this one before, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot going on here with the dial, with the hands, with the bezel, all of it in a very angular and aggressive case, very Seiko Samurai-esque if I had to compare it to something that you're probably going to be familiar with. Let's do dimensions. I did say this one was full sized. I get 41 and a half diameter on my calipers across the case. The bezel is a little bit smaller at 41. 13.4 mil thick, which is not too bad really for anything with an NH in it. 48 and a half lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width. And I'll give you two weights, 186 grams on the bracelet, sized up for my seven inch wrist at least, and 117 grams on the rubber. That is quite chunky. 200 meters of water resistance from a screw down crown, flat sapphire crystal with blue anti-reflective undercoating, and it's Seiko NH34 powered, of course. Case finish is all brushed. This is a proper tool watch, very samurai-esque again with all of those angles, of course. The super grippy knurled bezel and crown are also rather samurai. The crown has Revelo's logo on it. They're a Malaysian company, and I believe that is the same 14 point star that features in the Malaysian national flag. I like that logo. You see it at various spots around the watch. 
much, so it's just as well I like it. I think circular logos always look good, and it's nice to have that tie-in to the brand's country of origin. Let's have a look at that engineer-ish bracelet then in some more detail. Again, all brushed and very nicely made. It tapers from 22 down to 20, back up to 22 at the clasp, by the way. Those are five separate pieces in each link, but they are not articulated. The quick-release spring bars in the end links, though, and quick-release spring bars in the rubber strap also. The clasp features the star logo once more, plus company branding. Now, they're going to reduce the name just a little bit for production units, though. It's also all brushed and features a ratcheting internal adjustment. Great to see a watch for under 300 with an adjustable clasp like this one. But what if you don't like bracelets? A lot of brands like Christopher Ward and Squally offer rubber straps at a reduced price, and it's good to see smaller brands giving that option as well. The rubber strap is color matched to the dial, again has raised angular center sections, that LCS being echoed once more, quick release spring bars, two retainers. Now the logo, the, the star logo appears again a couple of times on the upper and lower surfaces, and the hardware is high quality. The case back on these prototypes is pretty simple but fairly inoffensive. Surprise, surprise, it features that logo again. They're going to make this 3D embossed for production units rather than just etched. Sure, why not? But the case back should never be a massive part of your purchasing decision anyway, frankly. NH34, 24 dual, hacking and hand-winding Japanese-made 3 hertz auto, 4 hands plus date, 40 hour power reserve, and accuracy best described as variable. For what it's worth, I put both of these on my time grapher. The white one was a champ, coming in at minus 2. The green one performed more as I would have expected, coming in at plus 11 seconds per day, flat on its back. Let's focus on the dial and hands then. You can really see those LCS references, can't you? Angles, angles, and more angles. And then some swirls matching the swirls on the case back. Plenty of depth to these dials with an angled GMT mark chapter ring, two layers to the dial itself, and then a six o'clock date complication sitting just underneath that. Now the logo features once again printed above the pinion along with the brand name and the model name, automatic and water resistance rating, etc. just above the date. The handset are clearly bespoke to the Admiral. They do look for all the world like the hull of an LCS, both hour and minute hand, beveled down the middle, longitudinally brushed and tapering to a sharp point at the tip. It's just a very simple needle second hand though. The majority of the hand is actually loomed on the green dial version, but features no loom on the white dial version, relying on a negative effect to be seen after dark, as you'll see in a second. The GMT hand is small, but sits right at the edge of the dial. The chapter ring features printed dashes for each minute and small Arabic numerals for each hour that the GMT hand points to. It's a nice circular brush ceramic bezel insert matte finish to match the brush. Fully graded and fully loomed as you'll see. The green one adds a third colour, that being red, to one line of text, the GMT hand and the triangle on the bezel. Yeah, look, definitely a lot going on, particularly in the more vibrant colours here. Not actually all that easy to read. The moans and niggles section is not too far away, I promise you. Let's have a look at the loom then. We already saw the fully loomed white dial version on the right in Loom Wars last week. It did okay. They're actually going to add a couple of extra layers of BGW9 for production units though. The C3 on the left hangs in slightly better than the BGW9 on the right as it currently stands. Both watches do pretty well though. As I said, these are well manufactured. They feel very, very solid in hand and a quality application of loom reflects that appropriately. On wrist, they do wear chunky, but they're not unwieldy. I'll show you various shots of both bracelet and rubber strap version on my 7-inch wrist. Now, the case may be full of angles, but there's a nice little undercut bottom edge helping the watch wear nice and comfortably. Now, legibility will, of course, vary depending on your chosen colour. The markings on the bezel are probably, actually, the most noticeable of all the markings on the watch, to be honest. Couple of pocket shots to finish. Flat sapphire, you do always get that bounce back in certain lights, but it's not a big problem. Uh, the blue anti-reflective undercoating makes its presence known when I move my watch around, when I roll my wrist. All right, as threatened, time for the dreaded moans and niggles section. Look, for 249 with the specs as discussed, you've got to expect a few compromises, I think. Straight cut end links on the bracelet are the most obvious one. Perhaps it's a stylistic choice, perhaps it is a cost-cutting exercise. 
It's not my favourite look either way, to be honest. And the silicone strap is a fluff magnet. I would have preferred they charged a bit more and offered an FKM strap instead, which just doesn't have this type of problem. And then there's the looks, it's full on. I've said that a couple of times already. For some people, that's gonna be great. For others, perhaps not so great. Each to their own, I guess. I'm not gonna tell you what type of watch you should buy, other than you should buy exactly what you like the look of, of course. I will say though that the GMT functionality of this watch kind of gets lost. GMTs with a dive style bezel are rare. Now they do have their advantages. The watch's utility as a dive timer is not compromised because the bezel remains a unidirectional fully graded dive time bezel. Bezel action is decent by the way, 120 click, no play. But the GMT function is most definitely compromised because the GMT numerals are either on the dial or in this case the chapter ring and very small. In fact, the GMT hand is also very small. If we look at it from a dynamic shot, you'd be forgiven for not realizing that this was a GMT watch at all. Plus there are compromises to the general legibility. Your best hour markers are fairly indistinct ones on the bezel insert. Likewise, minute markers, your best bet is on the bezel insert because those horizontal dashes on the chapter ring aren't really much use. All pretty indistinct to be honest for actual timekeeping. So make sure you're aware of that then. The Admiral is a dive watch first and GMT very much second. And even then it's not a watch for ultra accurate at a glance timekeeping. But no backtracking for the claim on the thumbnail and video title today. This is the best value microbrand GMT that I have seen so far. If you want an NH34 but you don't want to buy from AliExpress, I think this is going to take some beating. So there you have it. If you have been looking for a big, chunky, in-your-face micro-brand GMT diver, well, you've just found an option, haven't you? If you don't fancy this one but want something NH34 powered, click here or click here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you all again in a future video.